Hello, my name is Tom Chang for Sports Guys for this brief Bucks recap for September 10th, 2012. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers emerged victorious against Cam Newton and the visiting Carolina Panthers in the late Sunday afternoon game, 16-10. The Panthers were held to 10 yards of rushing in only 13 attempts, while the Bucks got Doug Martin started leading the way with 95 of the team's 130 rushing yards. While the Panthers forgot that their offense is primarily contingent on running the ball successfully, Newton produced a serviceable 303 passing yards with one touchdown and two interceptions in a still very winnable contest. As the old saying goes, history is told by the victors, and the focus was the return of the smothering, resourceful Tampa Bay defense sorely missed since the glory days of Monty Kiffin. As Bucks fans have shown in ticket sales the sour taste in their mouths of a lackadaisical front office and improving coaching talent in Raheem Morris, who was surely set up to fail. The debut of coach Greg Schiano as an NFL head coach was marred by the fact that the Bucks game was the only one in opening week that was blacked out despite the Glazers taking advantage of the 85% capacity rule. Perhaps this throwback and nostalgia of a once great defense could start to rouse fans again since the Buccaneers have a few things going for them. 1. If the preseason game against the Patriots and this game against the Panthers are in the indication, 2012 season could very well follow the path of another shocking team last year in the San Francisco 49ers. Granted it's week 1. But if the way the Niners have showed their mastery of the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau is any indication, they look to be a team on a bigger rise. The Niners could very well be a model for the Bucks to follow, and quarterback Josh Freeman has a chance to match, if possible, surpass Alex Smith if he gets to grow into Mike Sullivan's system in the similar way that Eli Manning grew when Sullivan was around in the New York Giants. Speaking of New York, two, the Bucks have two weeks to show the fans that they're for real. In two road contests, if the Bucks manage to defeat the Super Bowl defending champions, New York Giants, and the Dallas Cowboys in the following week, they might have a good chance of selling out or at the very least reach the 85% capacity required for the next home game not to be blacked out against RG3 and the visiting Washington Redskins. I would almost certainly guarantee a sellout if the Bucks defeat the Cowboys and the Giants by two or more scores. Anything less, anything less, anything less, I believe, will result in another blackout. Josh 3. Josh Freeman showed he can get the Bucks to start fast. As per Shiano's comments, he opted for more conservative play calling in the second half. While there were penalties that stalled drives, one has to wonder what Shiano intends to do with Freeman as the season progresses. For one, conservative play calling is only as successful as your running attack. Doug Martin showed a lot, but he has to do this on a week-to-week -week basis. And unfortunately, the last year-to-year -year productive back the Bucks ever had was the name of Warwick Dunn. Martin will really have to play like Ray Rice, and that's putting a lot of pressure on the young rookie. And if he falters, the options from there just bottom out from DJ Ware to the fading LeGarrette Blount. If Shiano shapes Freeman into a game manager, he may, you may potentially damage any progress he can ever make as a game changer, or if he's keeping things close to the chest in hopes that Freeman could really take over and evolve the way that Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, and Eli Manning have become elite quarterbacks from just learning the system. In the Bucks' defense, the offensive coordinator has kind of gone like a revolving door, and no quarterback is ever able to really truly thrive because, well, if you keep losing your offensive coordinator every, every once or two years, well, the production becomes stagnant and no one ever becomes successful. For Sports Guys, this is Tom Chang signing off.